Hi I am Shah and this is DataBit Technologies. This is part 2 of SQL Server Management Studio tutorial. In this session we will understand how to create, alter and drop a database. In part 1 of this video series we have seen how to connect to a SQL Server using SQL Server Management Studio. Now it's time for us to create a database. Now remember in SQL Server most of the things can be done in two ways. One is graphically using SQL Server Management Studio. Second is using the query. Now let's see how to create a database graphically using SQL Server Management Studio. Let's flip back to SQL Server Management Studio. Now within the Object Explorer window, you see a databases folder. Right click on the databases folder and select new database. At that moment we do that. You see a new database dialog box. All you have to do here is to provide the name of the new database that you want to create. For example, let's say I want to create a database with name sample one and click. Okay, so what's gonna happen now? Behind the scenes SQL Server Management Studio is going to issue a query to have this database created for us. So if you expand the databases folder you should see sample one database created there. Now we can also create a database using a query. Now let us see how to create a database using a query. Now database is also one of the types of SQL Server objects. Just like tables views triggers and procedures etc. About which we'll talk about in a later session. But remember, irrespective of the type of the object that you're creating in SQL Server, you use the create statement. Okay, so create now. If I want to create database, I will say database. On the other hand, let's say if I want to create a table, I will say table. If I want to create a view, I would say create view. So depending on the type of the object, you specify the type of the object that you want to create, which in our case is a database. So create database. And what is the name of the database that I want to create? So let's say I want to create a database called sample2. Okay, create database. And the name of the database. And execute. So what's gonna happen now? It creates this database sample2. So to see the database, refresh the databases folder. And you should see sample through there. And let's say, for some reason, if you close the object explorer and you want it back, just go to the view menu and select object explorer. So you have it back all right. So we have seen how to create a database graphically using the designer as well as using the query. You know these two are user defined databases. Whereas if I expand system databases folder, you see there are some system databases, master model, msdb, temp, these databases are provided by SQL Server installation itself. And these are required for proper functioning of the SQL Server. So they should be there. So system databases and user defined databases that we create. Okay, now for every database that we have. Whether it is a system database or a user defined database. There are two files that gets generated. Let's click. Right click on one of the user defined databases. Go into properties. And in the files tab you will have a path. Okay so there is a path here let me copy that path. Paste that in the run window and press enter. Now if you look at this you. See there is sample1.mdf and sample1log.ldf. So these are the two files that are related to the database that we have just created sample1 and sample2. Okay, so what are these files? MDF file is nothing but the data file and this is the actual master data file which contains actual data. Whereas LDF is a transaction log file and we use this file basically to recover the database in case if there are any problems. Now we will be talking about these two files in a great detail in a later, but for now understand that you know whenever we create a database these two files get generated .mdf and .ldf. MDF master data file LDF log data file. All right, we have seen how to create a database. Now let's see how to rename a database after it's been created. 
To rename the database there are two ways. One you can do that graphically using SQL Server Management Studio. Or you can write a query. To do that graphically just right click on the database, database. And select rename. Just like how you rename the file within the Windows file system. And then provide a new name there and press enter. The name will be changed automatically. But on the other hand, let us say how to rename a database using a query. Now if you want to do it with query then there are two ways to do that. One is to basically use alter database command. So, alter database and then the name of the database modify name equals sign and new database name. Alright, let's see how to do that. Let's say I want to change the name of sample2 database to sample3. So alter database. And I want to alter sample2 database. And what do I want to alter? I want to alter the name to sample3. So when I execute this query what's gonna happen? The name has been changed from sample2 to sample3. And if you want to see the change just refresh this folder. So now you should see sample3. Another way to change the name of the database is to use one of the system stored procedures. Now we'll be talking about stored procedures in the later session. But to understand that, stored procedures are nothing but a group of commands that are executed together. We'll be talking about them the later session. Right now understand that there are two types of stored procedures. One is system stored procedures. And the other one is user defined stored procedures. Now what are system stored procedures? These are provided by Microsoft SQL Server, which are basically used for functions, like renaming stored procedure. Or if you want to view the text of the store C that you can use SP underscore help text. If you want to find out how many indexes are there on a table you can basically use the stored procedure called underscore help index. There are several system stored procedures that we use for a variety of different tasks which we will be looking at as we go through this course. But for now understand that, if you want to rename a data, there is a system stored procedure called sp underscore rename db, which can be used. And to this stored procedure. Obviously, if you have to change the name of a database, you know you will have to tell it what is the database whose name you want to change. And what is the new name. So provide these two parameters to the stored procedure, which will do its job. Let's see how to do that. So let's say I want to change sample3 database to sample4. So sp underscore rename db and what is the old name of this database sample3 and I want to change that to sample4. So the database name sample4 has been set. And now if we refresh, you should see sample4. Alright so we have seen how to create a database and how to alter the database. Now finally let us see how to drop a database or delete a database. Okay again, to drop a deleted database you can basically do that graphically using SQL Server Management Studio or by writing a query. For example if I want to drop this database. I can just right click that and say delete. Okay. And the moment I do that what's gonna happen behind the scenes. It will delete the MDF and LDF files that are associated with this database. Okay, so if you go to that folder, you see sample1.mdf and sample1-log.ldf. Now if I delete this graphically, so I'm deleting this database. Click OK. So what's gonna happen that database got deleted? And if you go into the folder, the log files and the MDF files both of those files should also be deleted. Okay now we have seen how to do that graphically. Now let's see how to do that using the query. To drop any object like database table view etc. We basically use the drop statement. Drop and what do I want to drop? I want to drop the database. So database. And then the name of the database that you want to drop. Let's say sample 4. So when I execute this query, 
What's gonna happen sample 4 database will be deleted and behind the scene both the MDF and LDF files will also be deleted. But remember when, when you are dropping a database, the database should not be in use. For example, let's understand what we mean by that. In the database server environment, one or more can connect to that database using their respective computers. Now let us say, one is using sample for database and other one is trying to delete the database. What should happen ideally? It shouldn't be deleted because this user will get an error. Because, for example, there is a query that's being executed. And meanwhile, the query of someone is being executed. Another one is trying to delete the database. What will happens at that point? The database will not be deleted developer you will get an error stating. Cannot drop database because it is currently in use. So if the other users are connected, you need to put the database in a single user mode and then drop the database. Okay so if there are so many users connected to the database then the database is set to be in multi-user mode. So you will have to bring it back to single user mode before you can actually drop that. If there are people currently connected to that database that you're trying to delete and the way we do that is. We again use the alter database command alter database the database name that we want to alter. And we want to set the database in single user mode with rollback immediate. What we mean by with rollback immediate now. This option. Let's say for example. If one user is actually using the database. And there is a long running query. The query is taking let's say 10 minutes to execute and we trying to delete that. Obviously cannot delete that because that database is currently in use. So what we can do basically we can force the database to be set into single user mode. And then at that point of time we can also tell if there are any pending transactions running on that server roll them back immediately. Immediately. Okay, so this option with rollback immediate. Let us simulate that. Let's open another SQL Server Management Studio and try to connect to that slash. And then let's put the sample for database into use. Let's connect to SQL Server Management Studio. Okay, so we are connected to SQL Server Management Studio. And let's open up a new query editor window. And let's select sample 4. Here, so it's like this. If one user who is using sample for database and this is another user who is trying to drop the database. Now let's try to drop this database and see what's gonna happen. So I'm trying to drop this database. Look at this, this query is trying to drop the database, but we are not able to do that because this user is currently connected. Okay, but on the other hand, let's cancel this query. Look at this, it's still not completed. It's waiting for that user to release that. So let's cancel this query, let me close this connection. And now, if I execute the statement, it will be dropped immediately. Or what you can basically do is. You can graphically do that. Delete the database and you can say close existing connections, which will basically do effectively the same thing. Keep that in mind if you want to drop the database that's in use. You can do that. The database name sets single user with rollback immediate. With this rollback immediate option will basically roll back all incomplete transactions and closes any connections to the database that you're trying to drop. And also a very important point to keep in mind system databases cannot be dropped. For example if I try to delete one of the system database you cannot do that you will get an error drop database. Let's say for example I want to drop in the master database. And if I execute that, look at that cannot drop the database master because it's a system database. Thank you for watching this video of SQL Server Part 2. Have a good day. Better luck next time.